So just in case you can hear some background noise, I've got my windows open because it's about 35 degrees in the UK. And I've dug out my Hawaiian shirt as well, just to really emphasize how warm it is in the UK. It's very, very unusual for the UK to have temperatures like this, but it means that I have to have my window open, otherwise I will pass out through heat exhaustion. So something's caught my imagination and I wanted to make a video about it. If you know me or if you know my videos, you will know that I have a massive, massive thing about motivation. I've made videos in the past about overcoming hard challenges, about weight loss transformations. I've made videos about motivation specifically or how, how to motivate yourself. And these are all things that are really important to me. And they're really important because I've come from a place where I was not very good at anything sport related. Sport was for other people. And now I'm in a place where I wholeheartedly embrace it. I love watching it. I love watching it in all forms. I love doing it. I love trying my hand at long distance running. I love trying my hand at short distance running, park runs. I've now recently just taken up cycling and I've got other things that I'm planning on doing. But the big thing I really, really love doing is trying out new things, trying challenges. As you will know from recent videos, I love trying challenges that I am not sure if I'm able to actually complete. So something has been on the internet, and the internet is a brilliant place. Something's been on the internet recently that has caught my imagination. And I wanted to talk about it on camera here because I think that it's relevant to kind of the stuff that I do. I'm trying not to go off on tangent. So I have actually made some notes. So for anyone that's been watching the Olympics, I've been obsessed with the Olympics. I've been trying to watch as much as I can in between work. And it's not been easy. However, for the first time ever in 2024, this year, breakdancing has been entered into the Olympics as an Olympic sport. Now, I'm not going to make this video about the virtues of whether breakdancing should be an Olympic sport. But put it this way, it is the first time I've ever looked at an Olympic sport and thought, I can do that. <laughs> so I don't know if that goes some way to explaining whether or not it should be an Olympic sport. Now, a good barometer for whether or not a sport should be classed as a sport in the Olympics, especially an Olympic sport, a good barometer for that is whether you look at it and think to yourself, I could probably do that. I could probably get to the finish line with the athletes. Whether or not you win or not is a different story. But if you can get to the finish line with the other athletes competing... Is it a sport? Now, if I entered into the sprinting in the velodrome, would I be able to cross the finish line with the other competitor that I'm racing, that I'm sprinting with? Absolutely not. Would I even be able to keep up with them on the first lap? Absolutely not. If I entered into the 200 metres or the 100 metres, would I be able to get over the finish line with the other competitors? Of course not. The same goes for swimming and the javelin. This is relatively new, skateboarding. Would I be able to get on a skateboard, go down those crazy high ramps and come up the other side? No. So should it be there? Probably. I don't know. These are all arguments for probably another video or maybe even a podcast episode. But breakdancing is one of those sports which has really, A, captured everyone's imagination and also kind of created uh, armchair experts when it comes to the virtues of sport in the Olympics. Anyway, I'm going off on tangent, but there has been, there has been a superstar that has come out in the wash on the back of breakdancing being in the Olympics. And that superstar goes by the name Ray Gunn. That's her nickname. Her real name is Rachel Gunn. And for anyone that's not been living under a stone, a hermit, in a cave, has been watching TV, has been online, on social media, you would have come across Ray Gunn already. Rachel Gunn. She has gone super viral online now i will say she did i've done a bit of research on this this is how much this has caught my imagination i've actually done some research mainly watching a lot of australian news channels because ray gun or rachel gun i'm going to refer to her as ray gun from now on because that is probably the best nickname i've ever heard i wish my surname was gun i don't know if anyone going off on a slight tangent i don't know if anyone's ever been a fan of red dwarf but this reminds me of that episode where they realize they've been in a, a total immersion video game their entire lives and they wake up and one of them's got the name jake bullet <laughs> what's my name jake jake bullet and his name his name is so much cooler than his character jake bullet this is the same with rachel gunn it's such a good name anyway ray gunn has gone super viral now she managed to earn her spot in the olympics in a tryout in her home country australia and she was able because she's Australian, she was able to compete for Australia. So she was on for, you know, medal opportunities against other countries. Now, the other countries that were there for breakdancing were taking it super, super seriously. And 
there's a lot of people out there from what I can see on social media that aren't sure whether she was taking the uh, was taking the mick uh, for, for lack of a better term. Now I think she's brilliant. I will put it out there. I will say that I think Ray Gun is fantastic. And now I can't include any footage of her break dancing um, display. I can't show you her routine, if that's what it's called. I, they're called battles. I found this out from watching the BBC's coverage. They're called battles. So where two people go up against each other and they do that run DMC. Everyone knows the music video I'm referring to. That run DMC kind of dance off, like full on Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, universe saving battle on the olympic stage and it's televised unbelievably it's most of it isn't that good i've got to be honest the gold medal winning performance i watched it i was like mm, you know i wasn't kind of on the edge of my seat thinking this is awesome sporting prowess but watching ray gun's performance i was clapping i was cheering because this is somebody who's gone into this either whether she's taking the mic or not and i don't think she is i genuinely think she's gone into this and there's one thing that she did that makes me think that she's taking this super seriously because she did something that not a single other competitor or, or or not a single other competitor that i saw did she did something that makes me think that she's taking this super seriously i'll tell you what that is in a sec i will say the only footage i've been able to find of her is online and the Olympics are super, super strict about copyright striking anyone that puts their footage onto YouTube, which is why finding footage of her is next to impossible. But someone did upload it to Facebook, the entire routine. I was able to watch it on Facebook, thank God, for Mark Zuckerberg. I don't know if it's been taken down since, but have a look. Um, I've not been able to find it anywhere else, the routine. I can't find it on any uh, uploads on YouTube. The BB, I will quickly say, I just want to have a bit of a moan about the BBC. For anyone that lives in the UK, the BBC's coverage of the Olympics has been absolutely appalling. I don't think I've been able to watch any of the individual sporting um, competitions. So if I've been wanting to watch the entire cycling, I've been able to watch snippets, but not the entire thing. And then also on catch up, you have to sit scrolling. There's no list of on what episode and what part of that episode. So timestamps of where the sporting, where the coverage is. I'm kind of not explaining this very well. So the BBC's coverage is really, really bad this year. I just want to say that on video for what it's worth. Um, I'm sure no one from the BBC is watching this. I couldn't find her on the BBC. I sat doom scrolling all morning this morning because I thought I might be able to kind of put some screenshots up from the BBC. I couldn't find it. So the only screenshots I'm going to put up are from news outlets that have uploaded this to their website and I'll put them up because they're, you know, media use. So if you're able to find her routine, if you haven't watched it already, please, please go and watch it. It is so, so good. Now, there have been words like cringe and embarrassing used to describe her routine. I think that's really, really unfair because this is obviously a lady who has gone out there and has taken it super seriously. That's how I think she's done it. I don't think this is a parody. I don't think she's taking the mick. I think she's gone out there and she's gone for it. And she's done the one thing that I always advise anyone that wants to start in sport. So anyone that messages me and says, you know, I want to start on Zwift. I want to get out there and start running. I want to lose weight. I want to go to the gym, um, especially the gym. The gym's a big one for this. My advice to anyone wanting to try, the big thing that puts people off is what other people think of them. And I always say, to hell with what other people think of you. Just go out there and try your best. When I first started running five years ago, I remember specifically, and I think I've mentioned this in other videos, I remember going out and trying to run for the first time. This was even before I started walking. And I couldn't run. I could not run. I was too big and heavy. And if you could imagine a 190 kg bloke trying to shuffle along a, a pavement on a street on a busy road. And I remember two blokes came past me in a transit van laughing, tooted their horns, pointing at me. Obviously, I couldn't hear them. They're inside a transit van on their way to work. It was early in the morning because I got up and I thought there'd be less people around. I actively went out and ran where I thought the streets would be quieter than running, say, midday. On hindsight, it was the other way around. I was out running at rush hour. And I had these two blokes, and I remember them. I remember them specifically tooting their horns and pointing at me. And that put me off. That put me off massively. You know, it, I, wasn't, I wasn't at the top end of my confidence, body image, you know. And to have those individuals point and laugh really put me off. But it didn't stop me. I kept pushing forward. I just didn't go out running at that time of day again. I chose a different time of day until I found where the streets were empty. And then eventually, I got to the point where I just didn't care. 
And I think that's kind of where she is. I think from a role model perspective, she's gone out and tried her best. Now I need to put this into context. So I called into all the footage I've seen and this is what I've managed to garner from the newspaper articles that have been published online. I've watched I think seven or eight different Australian news channels cover this as well because it's gone super viral in Australia. She scored her routine, if you haven't seen it, I'll tell you now, she scored, spoiler, zero. She I think is the only one to have scored zero at the Olympics. And look, I'm as ready to applaud someone having a go as the next person. But that doesn't mean that every child must win a prize. A dad performance is a dad performance. Unfortunately, our competitor, Rachel Gunn, a 36-year-old university lecturer, well, she got precisely zero points in three rounds of competition. Now, give me a break. Anyway, you cut it. Her performances were crap. Now, I'm not sure how the breakdancing scoring mechanisms work. The BBC didn't do a very good job of kind of explaining it. The only footage I could find was of the gold and silver battle. I didn't watch all of it because it wasn't that interesting, if I'm honest, but they didn't do a very good job. I skimmed through it at two times speed to try and find the analysis section where the commentators talk about how the scoring mechanism works. Couldn't really understand it. But I do know about gymnastics. I'm not going to go into detail about how I know about gymnastics, but I do know about gymnastics. And in gymnastics, in the Olympics, the scoring mechanism works in the sense that you start with a score which is pretty much perfect. This is your score. And all you can do is kind of lose points. Now, your, your score that you're starting with is based on the level of difficulty that you volunteer as your routine. So you say, look, this is what I'm going to do. The judges look at your routine and they say, right, based on what you're going to do, the moves you're going to do, we're going to also assign you this number for difficulty. So that's your score, right? If you went out there and performed it perfectly without any mistakes, errors, feet in the right place, arms in the right place, no twisting, everything's perfect, that will be the score you finish with. You can't get more than that and you won't lose points. But when you go out there and you do inevitably make mistakes because... Gymnastics is really hard and it's very difficult, especially if you've got higher difficulty moves, it's very difficult to make it perfect. So even Simone Biles, superstar gymnast, she will inevitably lose points. She just doesn't lose as many points as other people, which means, and also her routine is super difficult. Anyway, I'm getting into the detail of gymnastics, but that's kind of how the scoring mechanism works. Assuming, and I don't know this, assuming that that happens with breakdancing and that they have this score, and all they can do is lose points, she has lost every single point you could possibly lose for a routine, which I think is incredibly unfair. I can't see how that can happen, which makes me think that that's not how the scoring mechanism works. It works the other way around, which is you start at zero and then you build your points up based on the moves you do. But again, to finish on zero seems really harsh. I can't find the answers anywhere online, but if you want to, leave me a comment explaining it, but I'm really not that bothered. I'm never gonna watch breakdancing again because on the back of this routine, this is another point on the back, is it the back of this routine? I've had a few people on social media say that she's killed breakdancing or breaking at the Olympics because it's not gonna be at the LA Olympics in 2028. So 2024 is the first year that breaking or breakdancing as we all know it, has been entered into the Olympics as a sport it is not going to, that's it. It's its swung song. It's come in, mic dropped, and then left the room. It's walked out. Breakdancing will not be at the LA Olympics in 2028. So yeah, Tom Cruise will not be able to zip line down and land on the breakdancing stage because it's not going to be there. Which is, I think, unfair that a lot of people on social media are blaming her because, you know, who's to say that she'd even be there? So anyway... That's the kind of harsh criticism that this um, unfortunate individual is coming across online. And I think that's really unfair. So I've talked about the BBC's coverage because, you know, I'm really struggling to find more information about this. But there was one thing that she did, which I thought was brilliant. And that is she wore, and she was the only one to do this, she wore the Australian tracksuit. Now, let me just put into context why I think Ray Gunn coming out on stage wearing her full-on Australian tracksuit is such a big deal and why I think this is a reason why she took it super seriously. No one else that were coming out to battle, none of the other breakdancers battling on stage wore their country's colours, wore their country's flag. None of them from what I could see and I did try and have it look but again it was really hard to find coverage because the Olympics lock down their coverage and only um, allow certain snippets to be used by media outlets which I don't understand why the 
Olympic Committee are so strict about coverage. Surely they'd want that. Anyway, I'm going off on tangent. So I couldn't see that. So if there was someone else wearing their country's colours, forgive me, I couldn't find them. The lady she was breakdancing against, or the lady she was battling, wasn't wearing her country's colours. Now, I don't know anything about breakdancing. This is where I show my age, but they all look like 1990s Eminem straight out the pages of a teen magazine. They look like LL Cool J walking out on stage. She came out looking like an Olympian. So I think that she took this really seriously and wanted to represent her country. The best thing she did when she came out on stage, she did this move. She did this move that I would do back in the day when I used to drink at a disco. She mimicked a kangaroo. It was called the kangaroo hop. That's what she called it, or that's what the news presenters described it as, and they said that that's what she called it. It was called the kangaroo the kangaroo hop so good and she bounced around on stage doing the kangaroo hop and it was really hard to argue with anyone that says that she was taking the michael because it looked like someone of a certain age a dad doing a dance and you know where they've been let off the leash and they've had a few too many and they're having a great time on the dance floor which again is nothing wrong with that but she was at the Olympics and I think that annoyed people. <laughs> but if you haven't watched it, you've got to go and see her do the kangaroo hop. She then did the sprinkler. I'm not going to do the sprinkler. Uh, yeah, because I just don't want to embarrass myself online more so than I already have. But she then did the sprinkler and then she did a load of headstands and shuffles on the floor. And they were all kind of linked together. And I'm assuming in, in breakdancing that they're supposed to be linked in some way. You can't just, you know, do a headstand, get up then do the sprinkler, then get back up again, and then do the kangaroo. You have to link them. Her linking was appalling. <laughs> I'm going to say that now. Now, I've already mentioned that it's not going to be at the LA Olympics, but she has been getting a lot of backlash, and she has been getting a lot of criticism. I think, and this is where I kind of probably lose the argument now, I think she's gone out there, and she genuinely wants to represent her country, and she wants to do her best, and she's got this whole sporting mentality, which is, don't listen to your haters. Do do something positive. Say yes. Try and overcome something that's really, really hard. Try and, try and be someone you've never been before. Uh, make change. All the things that I stand for on my channel. I genuinely think she's gone out and done this. That's why she's caught my imagination. She reminds me of a British hero. He's somebody who, as soon as I say the name, for anyone living in the UK will know exactly who he is. She reminds me of Eddie Edwards or as he became commonly known as, affectionately known as, in 1988, he became known as Eddie the Eagle. I'm going to put this into context, right? In 1988, I'm reading this off of, off of my notes here. In 1988, Eddie Edwards was a British ski jumping champion. He did have a back history in ski jumping. Up until this point, Britain had never had anyone enter into the Winter Olympics in ski jumping before. And there was probably a reason for that, because we are not necessarily known for ski jumping. Or we're not probably unfair for anyone that does skiing or ski jumping. We're not known for having loads of mountainous peaks full of snow to practice on, which is probably why we're not a country that's known for ski jumping. In the same way in the movie called Runnings, the guys there from Jamaica didn't necessarily have anywhere to train on their toboggan slopes. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going off on tangent. But he entered into the 1988 winter olympics in the ski jumping and he became britain's first and only olympic ski jumper where he was fondly rechristened eddie the eagle now i'm not going to go off on the story about eddie the eagle this video has been going on long enough this video is about ray gun um but she reminds me of that eddie the eagle british mentality or australian mentality where she's gone in and just given it her best which is what eddie the eagle did regardless of whether or not she probably never even expected to even come anywhere close to winning to get zero, I thought was very harsh. Now, I will say, I really don't like the fact that she's had to kind of go under the radar a little bit, under the radar, excuse the pun. She's had to go into hiding because she's been getting quite a lot of hate and a lot of trolling and a lot of aggression on her Instagram. She did post an Instagram post. Let me see if I can find it. Hang on. Now, this is her Instagram and she did post this, which I thought massively represents the point I'm trying to make in this video and I only saw this after I wrote some notes down. Don't be afraid to be different. Go out there and represent yourself. You never know where that's going to take you. 100% true. That is so, so true. And this kind of makes my point for this video. 
she's gone out there. I think I genuinely think she's tried to try her best. And I think that the negativity she's received is unfair. I'm going to say that now. And I wanted to make this video, not because I've got a massive audience. I don't. I don't have millions of people that are going to see this. So I can't really combat. But I wanted to put something out into the into the universe. I wanted to do some positive karma in her direction to say that I absolutely get why she's attempted this. She hasn't done any damage. I can't see. I don't think the fact that, you know, if, you, if you're going to have first place, then you've got to have last place. And I kind of, I can kind of resonate with that. Now, I'm not trying to comp compare myself to the Olympics, but when I do park runs, I go into park runs just wanting to be the best version of me and to try and beat the person I was yesterday, last year, the year before, five years ago. She's probably gone in with that same mentality. I never expect to win a park run. I know I'm not going to come in the top five. I know I'm not going to come in probably the top 50, depending on how many turn up at a park run. But I go there knowing that if I put my, my heart and soul into it, I'm going to get something from it. And that's what she's done. However, and I will say there is a however, I want to just combat that because there is going to be some people probably arguing the flip of that coin. I do get that competitors, if they've trained their entire lives to be at the Olympics, to be the best they can get, to get that 0.1% gain that is required to get their nose over the line before second place, to beat the person next to them, to sprint, to run hard, to push hard. I get that those on bikes, those that are running, those that are sprinting, those that are, you know, in the in in the endurance events especially, I know they've trained their entire lives and this is the pinnacle of being there. And they and they want to compete with the best. And I know that some of the other Olympians probably feel that she's kind of devalued that. I can't see that personally. I know that's the flip of that argument. I'm just going to put that out there because, you know, um, I, I didn't want people thinking I am blind to that as a concept. I do get it. If I was at the best at the peak of what I would, but at the end of the day, this is breakdancing, guys. She hasn't rocked up at the 100 meter men's sprint and tried to compete with the others. She's entered into a break dancing competition and she's gone out there and if anything else, she's got people like me talking about it. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about on this video. That's it. Cheers guys.